Hey everybody, uh, welcome to our life in the Philippines. Today we are doing a little different video and we are up in where, hon? Kapash National Shrine. Yeah, and where is that? Up in Tarlac. Tarlac. Tarlac, right? Yeah. Um, I've always been interested in a little bit of history and uh, we just got, you know, felt like going up there. We've never been up there. We've been driving by a couple of times. Hey, what you're looking here is the access all the way from the road there. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look all the way down there, uh, you'll see it. So we're going to walk around a little bit today. Yeah. And that is the National Monument. Uh, the shrine, it's, uh, uh, it's kind of an interesting construction. It has three concrete legs, and we're going to take you in there eventually. I think the tower name is, uh, Ob oh, what's that? I can't know. Uh, Obelisk. 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 Yeah, I, yeah it, it, it's a 70 meter, you know, I, I wasn't sure, you know, I guessed it was about 50, 60 meter, but I think uh, we got a brochure in front of us here and it looks like it is about 70 meters. Yeah. Um, anyway, one of the things um, around this whole thing, this is uh, uh, part of the World War uh, um, uh, World War II history. Yeah, they call it Wall of Heroes. Th oh, this is called the Wall of Heroes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this wall uh, is pretty interesting. Uh, uh, it was put up and it has every single name of the fallen soldiers that came up to um, uh, to Kapas. Yeah. Uh, Filipino and American soldiers uh, had um, a death march from Mariveles to San Fernando in Philippines and then they were um, uh, taken in trains in uh, uh, and I, we're going to go and show you that later. They were taking, taking in like cargo trains. Uh, but anyway, uh, every single name of every fallen soldier is engraved in these, this entire wall. And it's a huge wall that circles the entire monument of that high building, 70 meter tall building. Yeah. Uh, and you can see it stretches all the way around and it's full of names. Uh, it's, it's kind of hard to believe actually the magnitude of uh, sacrifice that was made during the Second World War. We just felt we wanted to come here today and, and uh, do some a uh, little different blog and, and, and we know we have a lot of um, retired military and all the guys that are watching and we wanted to do it for them. This is something that uh, is past history but there is so much to learn from the history. Yeah. And we're just walking down this um, Here, uh, uh, wall of heroes. A wall of heroes and the names are just Every single line there, guys, is a name of somebody who sacrificed their life for your freedom. The, this construction, the building in the center, there, is pretty interesting because it has three different concrete legs. And uh, you can see in between it. And we're going to take you around and take you inside that thing so you can see how it looks also. And it stands about, se uh, like we said, um, what was it, 70, Seven, me 70, 70, me meters. 70 meter tall? Yeah. Um, they said that, that, uh, uh, that mu mu monument is, mo 
is symbolized of peace. Yeah. Tower, that tower, I mean. Yeah, it's uh, it's a symbol of peace. Symbol it was of created peace. on the three legs, though, has a meaning, and I, I read that somewhere. Um, one leg is for the Filipinos, one leg is for the Americans, and one leg is for the, for the Japanese. Japanese, and it symbolizes the peace. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't know if you can see uh, what's there, but it's kind of hard to read. Um, but it is all about the sacrifice that these people made. Yeah. There are some amazing um, engravings in, into the rocks here. Uh, that, that, that picture is actually awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and it talks about a lot about uh, uh, the sacrifice these guys and these men did. Uh, the, uh, yeah, you see there on the wall, it says estimated defenders who actually reached the Kappas was 45,692 Filipinos and 9,300 Americans. And if I am correct, 31,000 of them died of hunger, thirst, torture, uh, torture um, illness, you yeah. know, a lot of sickness. Um, and uh, the whole area has a lot of interesting history. Uh, there you can see the other way through the leg. You see right through it. So it's just an open structure uh, and, and you can see right through it. So um, we're going to take you in there in a mi minute here. So we're going to go there uh, and head in and uh, take a look at it from the inside. Yeah, it's, it's amazing also because there's a lot of people going in this place yeah yeah Families. there was yeah uh, yeah and they have some uh, uh, you know picnic areas you can go there and visit and sit down and yeah. and uh, it, it, it's it's an interesting ground um, so let's try to let's try to go inside and and see here uh, what we can do But if you look around, you see the walls, right? So it's it's like a huge circle around it. And it has names all over and it is all engraved in stone. It it <clears throat> it reminds me a little bit about Washington and the memorial up there. All right, let's go inside here and have a little look and see how it looks like. We, we have some people in here and we got to respect them as well. All right, now you see straight through all the way up to the top. <coughs> and there's three legs and I'm standing kind of inside one of the legs. And you see all the way up there. It's unbelievable. I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm having a little bit of voice problems here. All right. So uh, let's move on. You wish you never see another war. All right, the 
December 7, 1991, President Corazon Aquino declared this as a national shrine. By proclamation. It is really windy here, guys, so I hope you can uh, hear this. Yeah, so it's Tagalog, so now you're going to read to us. He said, Itinatag noong 1940 bilang camp O'Donnell. O'Donnell, yeah. O'Donnell, or whatever. Nagsilbing binangguan, he said, they built this, this area in 1940 being a camp. Prison, prison camp here. Right. For all the Filipinos, uh, 40,000 Filipino soldiers and 9,000 uh, American soldiers captured right. here in World War II. And then they said they suffered dead march here. And then the, the, the total of Is it the total of who experienced the death march here is 3,000 or 30,000. 30, was that how many have died? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 30,000 died here in this uh, no, death march. Yeah. Yeah, the death march went from uh, Mariveles. It started in Mariveles, I think. And we did a video down there and showed you the starting point at at an earlier point and I will put up a little uh, um, uh, information on that in, on top of the screen here in, in the information. Click on that little eye and you will see that video. But anyway, here is the zero point of the death march starting um, and uh, I just thought I wanted to document that. I, I'm very interested in past history because you can learn a lot from it and it becomes uh, it becomes an important uh, thing to educate our younger generations about really what took place and even me I was born after the Second World War was over I was about maybe uh, nine years after the World War however my father uh, who was born in the uh, 1931 he experienced uh, the Second World War as a child, uh, and uh, we have had some sit-downs and interesting conversations about it. And they marched from Marivellas to um, San Fernando, yeah. and then from San Fernando, they were uh, put in trains and taken up here, and I think somewhere around here, there is one of those uh, train carriage, yeah. um, uh, and from what I understand, that's the last, last one that is in yeah. existence. And he said they will bury all the heroes died in one in one place. Right. They were buried in one place. Right. Okay. Yeah, they had mass graves. They yeah. just the Japanese were were pretty. Uh, the Japanese were pretty crazy during that war. I, I hear. Um, let's let's walk down this way, honey. Um, yeah, but we can still walk. Come on. Um, uh, the um, the the uh, funny part, or funny or funny, that maybe not be the correct expression. Um, but when uh, some Japanese people are coming here, um, they are actually um, 
feeling sad and apologizing for their countrymen and what they did um, under the Second World War. Um, we're glad that we have been united. What does it say here, huh? And when the world shall wake again from grim decay to growth in beauty, let no one ever know my pain, but I have done my humble duty. That was a veteran writer and poet that wrote that. All right, so where are we going? Where, where are we going, huh? Ah, yeah, you, you want to show the gardening? Yeah, this is the botanical area. Yeah, yeah, and this is <coughs> kind of outside of the wall. Yeah. Uh, they keep it really nice, though, uh, very well kept. Um, anyway, um, another thing that is interesting Look, there's a lot of uh, if you notice, I don't know if you can see it out, but if you notice, the trees are planted in straight rows. Yeah. And it goes all the way around this area. Uh, can you look and see how how big the area was in, in square or acres? I think it's like 30 some acre um, somewhere. And they planted 31,000 trees. 31,000. So all the 25,000 Filipinos and 6,000 Americans who died in concent con concentration camp. Oh, okay. And in this area is 35 hectares. 35 hectares, and there's trees. So they they planted again. Uh, let's repeat that. 31,000 trees uh, was planted. Um, and they were planted one for every soldier that died here in the concentration camp. Clean as you go. There's a little park there. People can sit there also down there. Right? That is okay. We don't need no smoking. That's the entrance That entrance to, to the shrine from, from the road. And it's uh, decorated with trees and flags. It's a beautiful garden. The here we can we can get this too. Try to get this sign here for you guys. This kind of uh, tells you why the trees were planted. I'm here, huh? Here, on, on this side here. On this side here, you clearly see, um, clearly see the numbering of the trees. It starts 2618 here, and then it goes up, and there's literally thousands of them. 